Alright, man, welcome back to another CoffeeZilla reaction. Uh, today we got I Destroyed a $500 million Ponzi Scheme. Uh, now, this is part three of CoffeeZilla's three part series. Uh, if you haven't watched the first two, I highly re recommend watching both of those, man. And, uh, yeah, I've been I've been waiting for this for over a week, so let's not waste any more time. Just get right into this one, man. This is gonna be absolutely fucking great. I'm sorry. The finale of this video got a little messy. And it's gonna be up to you to put the pieces together. Okay. Things might be a bit out of order. It's up to me! And you! Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, you I'm now learn of this savant that is the... Man behind Traitor's Domain. Dead Sub Franco. All the documents. But Yo, make sure you got yourself something to smoke or something to drink or something to snack on. Just just something to keep yourself busy while you're sitting here. You know what I mean, man? Eventually, a pattern started to emerge. <clears throat> I was in my room one day and I overheard a conversation and I thought I caught something about B booking, switching people from A book to B book. And so I asked Dave about it. And he blatantly said to me, he's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, if people are going to be losing, you might as well be booked. Though. We're just leaving money on the table. Holy. Yo, hey, by the way, make sure to go subscribe to CoffeeZilla for these absolute bangers that he puts so much effort into. Like, at least go, at least go like the video, man. Like the video and give him a nice sub. Also, hey, if you like this video, yeah, like the video and uh, subscribe if you're new, man, for real. <clears throat> we traced. Even more money yeah. that had come in. No more. To them, no more stopping for the rest of the time. Went into Trader's domain. Holy. Coffeezilla. I don't think he's ever dealt with someone my size before. And nobody knows anything about his family because they don't have the resources I have. Woo! The threats. The threats. Uh, hello? Yes! I knew immediately. It was I've been there. waiting too long. I could tell his voice. I raced to the office, but you could tell by what I was wearing, I wasn't expecting the conversation. Hey, it's even later. Hey, Ted, thanks for taking the time, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I'll keep it quick with you. No problem. You weren't ready for it, but you've been on this case for months. Oh, I was prepared for it. I just wasn't expecting it. I mean, he seemed really hostile at first, and like he was just trying to get me off the phone real quick. <coughs> Obviously, mission one. Right. Keep the guy talking. I guess if, if since you don't have a lot of time, let me just start firing off some questions for you, and uh, you'll forgive me if uh, you know they're they're hard questions. But I think you know, given the time constraint, let's make sure we get to the good stuff. You know. Real and I true. Mean, I'll, I'll I'll clarify items up until 2020, because after 2020, I was no longer the owner of the platform, so I don't know what happened with the platform, and I think. Just to be honest with you, uh, before we continue, obviously I've spoken to my counsel. We we know about your YouTube channel now. We reviewed it. I mean, there's really nothing of substance on there, to be honest. I think it's uh. more of a glorified, uh, just clickbait uh. channel. Um, I, I, uh, glorified clickbait, huh? Here we go, chat. You've, done, you've taken a lot of the local uh, hot topics for the, for the time and tried to monetize it. So, I mean, I appreciate your effort. I Hot think what topic. you're going to do is you're going to have What's the story got to do with a that? hard time with this fact-finding mission due to the people that you're working with. So I'll let you do what you need to do. That's why I said we only need five minutes. Um, I can't really entertain your conversation because there's really no merit for it in my situation. Okay, wait a second, wait a second. Back up. Ted said he doesn't own Trader's Domain anymore? Because after 2020, I was no longer the owner of the platform. How's that possible? You know, I was actually expecting this. When I was going back through all those documents, I saw him trying to set this up. It's kind of a lot to explain. Might as well bore me. No one else in here is going to. Bar is dead tonight. All right, I'll tell you. Have you ever heard of the Panama Papers? Nope. Panama Papers? Sure. Big news story in 2016. Leaked papers show that rich people own everything. Not exactly a headline, if you ask me. No, 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 that, that's not the real story. We knew they owned everything. The real headline was that they kept it offshore. And the question is, how did they keep that a secret? I don't know. Good lawyers? More like bad laws. In places like Panama, you could own a company, but not be on the paperwork. 
Can that what? How? Well, how does that even make sense? What the fuck? So you can own the company, but like... Wow. Okay, so obviously what he's saying is, by 2020, he's like, I wasn't... At least this is what I'm getting out of it, right? He's like, by 2020, I wasn't even involved with him anymore, or I wasn't even the own, company owner. That's probably because they swap it to one of those countries where you don't have to be on the papers to be the actual owner of it. Holy... You can hide millions in companies you control, but if anyone asks you about it, you're off the books. Hmm, I see. The true owner... That's actually that's insane. Right. It's called beneficial ownership, and the Panama Papers is just the start. Man, okay. I need a haircut. I, I need a haircut what and to bleach it again. With traders domain? Well, our friend Ted decided to use a similar playbook. Check this out. Here are the founding documents of Trader's Domain. In it, we see the first director's minutes where Ted Sofranco and David Negus got in this whole thing. They both get half the company. There they shit. are. But there they are. 50 here's 50. the key thing. In January 14, 2020, something changes. A new director gets appointed, someone named Arthi Kaniger, and watch this. After he gets in, Ted resigns. Oh, and it's in January 14, 2020. That's why he says he doesn't own it. That's right. Uh, but also, that's just insane. I found another document, dated a little later, three days later, in fact, an acknowledgement letter admitting. So it's like a fake owner, essentially. You have like a uh, or a stand-in owner, rather. Like you have someone who like fills in the role of owner, but they don't really. They're just kind of there for like the face of it. They're not really behind the actual. The ultimate beneficial owner of Trader's Domain. Wow. Wait. Then doesn't that mean he still controls it? Of course. Yeah, exactly. Just so not legally. Just oh my yeah. god, oh, that's insane. It. That's what I wanted to tell Ted in the first place. You know, I rarely give you compliments, but I really think you got him. I thought he did, but Ted wasn't going to go down without a fight. Also, you said that in 2020 you signed over the account, but I have an acknowledgement letter from you that says that you actually are the ultimate beneficiary owner. Do you want to address that? No, because it's not true. So this signature on January 17th, 2020, where you acknowledge that all legal actions which may be taken by the company's director, which it's you did forged. sign over the director or shareholder, including but not limited to signing of agreements, documents, are confirmed by and agreed with me as the company's UBO, and I have full control over directors or shareholders' actions. And this is your signature at the bottom. Is that fake? Uh, yeah, because was, was that document stamped? I'm sorry, you're saying this signed document from you is fake? Um, all corporations have a seal. So is there a seal on that document? There's no seal on this document. Okay, so like Ted, I said, you, you should Ted, you know, Ted, why would somebody fake your signature on this? Come on. Um, the reason why that my passport's been passed around that's expired. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why there's documents of mine that's been expired and passed around. Yeah, uh, I mean, like I said, I mean... Please go on a better fact-finding mission. Oh, uh, what is he talking about now? Well, oh, check this out. Ted is basically saying that the document we have isn't valid because it doesn't have a seal that looks like this on the document, where ours just has his signature. Woo! This guy is slick, Coffee. I think his ability to lie is both his strength and his weakness, though. I mean, yes... He is very good, but no, don't probably go also why he picked up the phone in the first place. Oh, he thought he could bluff past you. Right, and he's actually done it before. In digging through Ted's documents, I found I wasn't the only person he tried this trick on. Back in 2019, the Ontario Securities Commission even investigated him. You mean like the Canadian government? Yep, they already looked into him, and Ted lied his way out of it. I even Holy have the no it. shot. Check this out. At the time, <coughs> Ontario was concerned... Dude, this case is fucking insane. It's about a guy who's literally just scamming his way through through the government. About like Trader's Domain soliciting Canadian investors in 2019. So Ted said they didn't have that many and they'd be removing them from the platform by July 1st. And then what? And then that was that. I mean, it was over. So what? They just stopped taking Canadian clients? Oh, of course not. Yeah. The obviously. investigation stopped. But I found people being recruited from Canada as early as directly after the fact. People like Armand, a customer who said he was from Ontario and wanted to sign up. 
and he said there was no option for it. And so they replied, just use crypto as the country code. The same thing happened with another Canadian. When he asked how to open an account, their response was, please use crypto as the country code. Wait, isn't, wasn't crypto? It. Holy shit, we're only eight minutes in. How is this a 45 minute video? This is insane. Um, but if I remember correctly, crypto was the country that you selected if you were from America. Yeah. And I cannot yeah, remember well, it why. It actually gets worse. Because in 2021, Ontario decided to investigate them again. No way. This time they caught them though, right? Nope. Ted lied again. He told the investigator, hope all is well. We're not affiliated with this organization since early 2020. Huh. That's what because he told of the, too. Because of the fucking, oh my god, because of the, the uh, substitute owner thing, whatever the fuck, out of that right. one country. And that I, is insane. Panama. That's why Ted and David pulled this trick in the first place, to avoid the feds. Of course. Now that you mention it, they were first investigated in 2019, so in 2020, they do this. He's already gotten away with it twice. So what are you going to do different? Well, this time we have a bit more evidence. We got that signed document, but we also have, even better, a video from Ted saying he owns Trader's Domain after he wasn't supposed to. Yeah, so when? It has to be after 2020, right? I did zones over here by myself. You haven't been able to explain why this isn't the I, case. It seems to I me that you, you're on the record saying you own Trader's Domain after 2020. Right? You're on the record saying that on video. I can send you the video if you want. Then we've got uh, you assigned documents saying that you're the ultimate beneficiary owner. And then we have to ask ourselves, why would you resign from a company that's making so much money to some sham director? Did you sign it over out of the goodness of your heart? Or did you sign it over sign it and o secure control? I didn't sign over the con I didn't sign over the, the company for the goodness of my heart. There was a sale made. Uh, so once again, like I said, you don't really have your facts. How much money did you make from Trader's Domain? Zero dollars. Mm. So you started it and you just sort of profited nothing. You didn't make a dime. No. Nope. You say you sold Trader's Domain in 2020. That's what you say. Yep. How much did yep. you sell it for? Uh, I think it was 40000 Right, right. But what I'm asking you is why would you sell a company that has millions of dollars in deposits is a successful offshore foreign exchange brokerage uh why would you sell that for forty thousand dollars because i had bigger plans mm. why would you sell traders domain for its true <clears throat> book value because i don't care about money ah okay maybe you care about money i don't oh brother this guy's a liar Holy. yeah you don't say well, maybe he used the cut maybe you care about money but i don't okay buddy yeah sure what does he care about? According to him, uh, the down... A billionaire that doesn't care about money. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fall of society. I don't agree with society at all. I think a lot of people, including yourself, are very delusional in terms of what you think society is doing. What do you think society is doing? Well, you're contributing to it. But, but contributing to what? Uh the downfall of society through social media. How? And through the ability of people like yourself to generate revenue based on what I would say maybe, I don't want to, maybe the theory is the wrong word or maybe, you know, the latest gossip, the latest information, Ted, you're monetized. you are the latest gossip. Yeah, so this you're monetizing. Is, this is a gigantic Ponzi scheme where people are suffering. Doesn't any of that matter to you? Once again, this is your benefit, not mine. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is a bunch of clients come to me. They say there, there's, there's this giant Ponzi scheme. Ted Safranco runs it. I find your name over all the documents. Then I come to you and you're telling me, oh, this is a salacious thing. This is just gossip. This is news of the day. If a $300 million Ponzi scheme, or let's say the CFTC is right, a $145 million Ponzi scheme. Let's even say it's a $10 million Ponzi scheme. If a $10 million Ponzi scheme is not worth talking about, what is? The lack of family value, uh, the way that people try and destroy other people's lives but, by but Ted, doing... You don't you Dude, that's ironic that he's saying, oh, the way that people try to destroy other people's lives. When he's taken 
a fuck ton of, he's taking mil hundreds of millions of dollars from other people. Probably literally fucking over hundreds of people's lives, so it's really ironic to hear him say, like, all these things. Like, Ted is just, you're so dumb, bro, holy shit. The lack of family value, uh, the way that people try and destroy other people's lives. But so ironic, but please point it out. Don't you think that the person who ran this Ponzi scheme destroyed people's lives? Thank you. Don't Probably you think they're to contributing to the destruction of family values? Thank you. you know? Well, I, I, yeah, I, point I out the you look at irony the in, in his that, fucking that, sentence that he said. Point out the irony in it. Well, call it a Ponzi, whatever you're investigating. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe ask those clients of yours that you're investigating if um, they had free will to make decisions. Wow. And maybe but if they were misled, right? If they were misled and lied to. I know, dude. Ho by who? I mean, by you, Ted, you fucking bozo. Oh, my God, dude. This fucking guy. Holy shit. Free will to make decisions. And maybe. But if they were misled, right? If they were misled. They just moved the goalpost, too. He literally just moved the goalpost, too. Let's, let's talk about that. Where it was first, um, first, oh, the people that, he was talking about the first thing, and then he said, oh, and now people, they have, don't they have their own free will? Stop moving the goalposts, bro. And maybe, but if they were misled, right? If they were misled and lied to, by who? By you, bozo! By you, Ted. <laughs> by me? Yeah, yeah, by you. Can you believe it? No, I can't believe this. I, I can't, can't believe, believe it. I'm filling Neither up another cone while I'm watching this. This spoke. is wild. What do you think about, you know, maybe it's your responsibility. It's your free will to invest. He's Jesus pushed Christ. that narrative before in the chat, making like uh, nobody ever solicited any money or anything like that. But meanwhile, that's all bull****. That is such a chicken response from like a total coward. Oh, my God. <laughs> so no accountability at all. I mean, None. this is sociopathic behavior, right? This is what a real sociopath does. They, they detach themselves from their behavior, and they blame their victims. I was getting angry at this point, given the disconnect between the damage this guy caused and the absolute lack of empathy. Did you at least show him that damage? I mean, I tried to. When a guy tells me that his brother mortgaged his house to invest in Trader's Domain, was that you don't Ted? feel like you have any culpability with that. That's what Ted Who looked like. the mortgage the house? They're trying to better their lives. You understand that, right? To support well, probably ostensibly his family. You know, you talk about caring about these family values. Ted, this guy's trying to support his family. Yeah. Don't you think that's By a good thing? It out? Not really. You're taking shelter and you're to abusing. invest money. To invest money, a mom put uh, ten thousand dollars to try to invest in his her kids' tuition. Do you not care about so, any of this? These family so values. These families. Well, I'm I'm thinking right now you're giving me two situations where uh, two people situations, have made yeah, two of many, you fucking bozo. Four choices, and now to trust I, you as the owner of the Pam account and the person who ran it. Once again, couldn't tell you. I mean, we have you on video saying you ran it, so we don't have to uh, trust you on this. I'm just stating what you said. I'm just repeating your words back to you. So you don't feel any culpability for what you did there. I mean, you're saying I'm destroying the fabric of, you know, family values. Don't you think you are? No. Damn. You are just a bozo. I thought I was heartless. It's honestly frightening to hear someone like that on the other end of the line. It's like talking to a shell of a human being. Uh, no offense. None taken. Okay, Did really? you run the PAM? The <laughs> PAM account? Unnecessary. Which one? Any of them. Which one? Okay, bruh. That's that's my first like cue to like, all right, so you ran multiple then. That's the instant cue. When you say, when I ask you something, and your response is, which one? That means, one, that means you already have knowledge of the thing. You know what I'm saying? And two, you're asking him to be more specific so you don't say, Oh, yeah, this one, and give out a certain one, and then that's not even the one he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that he says which one right there is instantly... You, you played yourself, buddy. You instantly played yourself. Human being. <clears throat> uh, no offense. None taken. 
Did you... If you have no, like, if you don't know anything about that, you would have been like, Pam, you would have like, I don't want to say question the question because by saying which one he is answering the question with the question, you would have like, you would have went more in in detail into what the specific thing he said. Human <clears throat> No like offense. what a Pam account is think, and all that. Did you run the Pam, the Pam account? An investment account. Which one? Traders domain. Any of them? Did you run any of the Pam, the, the high risk Pam account, the one that was trading so well? I don't know. You don't. You don't know you if don't you're running know. it or not. No. Um, how long we run the Pam system for? Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, people have liked it. Um, I I don't mind doing it. It's not difficult for me to trade. Um, trading is easy for me. It'll be basically, you know, when I decide I'm bored. So you say, quote, how have long you will you run the PAM system for? Um, I don't know. People have liked it. I don't mind doing it. It's not difficult for me to trade. Trading's easy for me. It'll basically be, you know, this. when I decide I'm bored. That wasn't you. Don't know what context that is. But you're just, it, I'm reading you the quote. It's you talking about the PAM system. You're saying, talking about trading in the PAM. You're saying you ran it. Don't remember that. I don't remember. How convenient. Yeah, the funny thing is, the victim said he was just talking to them about trading. I'm in chats right now on Telegram where he's claiming to be the, still today. He's still in there actively saying that he's trading. There are a couple of Wait, bad show days the chats. happened and he's like saying, you guys are stressing me show out. The show the chats. Show the chats. I want to see angry people. Do you think I'm not going to have a hard time trading with all this pressure and stress? So he's still claiming he's the trader. So the fact that he's telling you that he's not aware if he's ever traded on that, I mean, that it's just, who traded then, dude? Who's who's the trader? At this point, I don't know what to do. Ted's basically pleading dementia. I don't recall. Sounds like pleading the fifth to me. It's pretty surprising coming from Mr. Family Values because ultimately, that's who is hurt by all this, is the families. Do you think it's yeah, wrong it's that Algo Capital told the it's client a mad ironic. that it was running an uh, algorithm bot when in actual fact it was just you trading the Yeah, bot. it was just an actual guy. Whatever they told their clients, you probably have to ask them about. I wouldn't know what they're telling their clients. I do think I should ask about it. I, I'm just asking for your value judgment. Do you think they're destroying family values with that, perhaps? How they decide to run their business, if that's what they're doing, that's up to them. I don't judge other people. Oh, come on. You were judging me a second ago. Well, yeah, now. because you actually do something that I've researched. I don't know what those people do. He doesn't know? What? He's the one taking money from them. Yeah, I know. Our conversation at this point had basically run its course. He would stopped giving me real answers. Although, when he got the last word, I found it funny what he was still focused on. Mr. Family Values was still talking about the money. Well, this has been a very educational uh, call, believe it or not. Thank you for your time. Yeah, good luck with the monetization. Okay. With right, the thanks, monetization. Guys. Good luck nice. with your $300 million Ponzi scheme. Monetization. Simple. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good tape. You can hear he's rattled, coffee. But, oh, what now? Well, like you said. We're about halfway now. through, right? Ted yes, sir. Almost halfway through. Government already investigated him twice and failed. What's the smoking gun? Well, he was lying about Trader's Domain. He was lying about running the trading. We even want video of that. Sure. But what about the fake trades? You mean the fee booking? That's the real stuff. Do you have solid evidence there? I mean, yeah, we've got invoices. We've got an eyewitness. That's good, but they're just going to deny that. Do you think I need more? I hate to be the one to tell you this, because you'll love this. But yeah, you need absolute proof. Fair enough, I guess. Wait, wh what makes you think I'd like to hear that? I didn't say you like it. You love it. Yeah. Taste coffee. You can't live without it. True. Well, it sure beats being psychoanalyzed by a stochastic parrot. Coffee, I'm hurt. All this negativity coming from my best customer. From the looks of it, I think I'm your only customer. So I'll try not to be gone too long. The mouth. <laughs> Famous last words. I wouldn't see anyone for a while. I was obsessed, and the days flew by in a monotonous blur defined by a simple routine. Drive to the office in the morning, work till I could barely think, and then head home after dark to get some sleep. 
People started asking if I was okay. I didn't even know how to answer them. The truth was, either I would break this case, or he or would I break him. Yeah. He would break the case, or the case would break him. I'm so excited to see how this fucking plays out. Alright. I think I've got something. Uh, it's been several days of sleep deprivation and going through lots of files because, unluckily for me, a lot of people hate Ted. And they keep sending me stuff. So well, no, that's, I had to go through everything. It's unlucky, but it is lucky. You know what I'm saying? Because at least he didn't run out of leads. Everything. And after doing that, A, not doing great. B, uh, I think I did find something. And I want to show you that. But not going to do that here because my back hurts. Makes sense. Go back to the before. office. So. Some coffee. Nice. All right, we're back. Let's talk about fake trades. This whole case rests on whether Trader's Domain was making real trades or not. If it wasn't, True. it's a Ponzi scheme, end of story. Now, as part of this investigation, our first clue was that we found that Trader's Domain uses the software Beta Broker on the back end to make their trades. And we discussed how we found invoices from that company, and it looked like maybe they were B booking. But today, we discovered a lot more. I got leaked support chats between beta broker and traders domain themselves the back end stuff and i'm going to show you what it revealed now we're going to talk about the authenticity of these documents in a moment because they were leaked to me so we have to be careful but the headline of it True. is this beta broker wasn't just offering traders domain a software beta broker appears to have been helping traders domain fake their oh. trades hand in hand with them and we're going to prove all of this so here's oh, what we shit. Have. All right, let's go. Messages from the Beta Broker help desk. It's basically tech support. And we have screenshots between them and Trader's Domain. <clears throat> we can see what they were asking for help with. Here's an example. On the 4th of November, 2021, Trader's Domain sends a message. They need help. Hi, please remove all orders for 1104 and restore balance. That's November 4th. The response is, hello, we've received a request. We will check. And then... Dear David, I believe this is... Wait, is this like... Okay, this... no, 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 no. This is the two companies. All right. The co-founder of Trader's Domain, David Negus. We would like to clarify with you one point. We see that negative profit is visible on deals for 11-5, November 5th. Please clarify, perhaps you meant removing orders for this date or still for 11-4. David responds, yes, for today's date. Now... I know that seems like a lot, but it's actually simple what's going on here. Traders Domain is asking to remove losses they took in the past on trades so nobody sees that they're there. Now, they took these losses on the 5th of November, but David gets a little confused and thinks it's the 4th of November, so he asks them about removing those. But Beta Broker corrects them, and this is important because it shows that they knew that the whole point of this— Oh, my God. Yeah. Holy— corrects them and wow this is because it shows that they knew that the whole point of this is to fake a positive trading history and they say well hey you lost money today not yesterday yeah do you want us to delete today's trade so this is incredibly damning but i want to be clear literally oh my reasons. god i don't know if this is a rogue employee at beta broker doing this or if this is a systemic thing and probably why people go to beta broker in the first place i don't know the answer to that but what I do know is that Trader's Domain couldn't have done this by themselves. They show themselves to be incredibly incompetent. And Beta Broker was a huge part of their infrastructure to commit the crimes that they did. Now, here's another message. Hi, please remove all orders after 1330 GMT on 2060487. What's GMT? Which is in a 1330. That's obviously the time. So that's what? 130, right? Yeah, 130 GMT. I don't know what that is. Something, something time. Count number for Ted Safranco and restore all balances to that time. The response is this. Dear David, there are some profit deals. Could you please elaborate if we need to delete all deals for today after 1330 GMT? In other words, hey, maybe you just want us to delete the bad trades, not just the good trades. And um, 
That doesn't sound like tech support to me. That sounds like criminal support, in my opinion. And this shows in black and white how Trader's Domain faked this whole thing. They would do these trades, but they would remove the losing ones That's and keep so the winning ones to create a winning record that looked real in real time because there were... And then they were... And then on the back end, they were saying that it's a AI bot that they created that never has a overall losing record like it'll has it'll have some days that it loses but overall at the end of a month it it has gained a bunch that's insane order, right but of course what the customers didn't know is that those losing orders would all be quietly wiped away and that's how this ponzi scheme stayed afloat for so long. that's actually it looked insane. like everything was real they were very successful at faking this stuff although of course in the end it's also how it fell apart because as we showed in the first episode, Traders Domain's customers started catching on to the changing trades and they would talk about it openly. Yeah, he just changed the trades. He did, he just changed the exit, you know, dollar amount that he that he took on that trade. So this all oh, lines up with what we pops. know. Ted appeared to be trading in real time, but losing trades would suddenly vanish. And I know what you might be thinking, well, Look, this is great and all, but how do we know that these support chats are real? Maybe these are True. Photoshopped screenshots. 100%. You got to fucking. And I wanted to go ahead and validate the authenticity of these chats. It's a hard problem. You have to validate them. Like, if they're not validated, then they could just be 100% forged. Problem to solve. And what I realized is we could actually compare these requests for order removals with what people were publicly reporting. With actual if ones, oh. Up, then these screenshots are very likely authentic. And that's when I found this Reddit post showing two pictures of their trading account changing. Once when Ted had lost on a trade and then later that day when those same trades suddenly change. They change where they close. Now, just so you can read this, the blue arrows are the buys that Ted did, and the red arrows are the sells. And as you can see from the first picture, Ted has lost money using the Wall Street Bets trick of yeah, buying right high and selling low. Now, he's going to solve this, though, with a very simple trick called fraud. Because in the second called picture, fraud. you can see that the trades have been adjusted, and the story, as there is no Holy story shit. has changed. Now, suddenly, the sells are about breaking even with everything that was bought right here oh my god he just moved the sales pretty amazing right and, and fucking now, lied about clear, it all. this reddit user posted these screenshots months ago independent of the screenshots that i have but so someone else was like yo this is fucking and leave it to reddit too oh my god reddit is undefeated bro these screenshots months ago well I take that back. Reddit Reddit is not undefeated. Let me take that back. I, I retract that statement. Reddit has lost on a bunch of different areas. But for that instance, holy. Of the screenshots that I have. But when I looked at the support chats and cross-referenced them and the timeline with these trades happening on January 20th, I found a support ticket from Trader's Domain for that exact day. Please adjust all orders to close price of 1932.41 at 0927 GMT for both master account and all investor accounts. And the response is, dear client, you want us to adjust all today's master deals to close time 0927 and close price 1932.41. And then they list out the six deals. And David responds, yes, correct. And then the reply, all orders have been adjusted. And sure enough, when That's so crazy. At Reddit post, it all lines up perfectly. And in the screenshots, six trades were changed exactly to the price that was requested. Holy. Oh my God. Holy. One, two, three, right? Four, five, six. 1932. Holy shit. To the price. Got you. That's the got you moment. Was requested. Oh my god. I cannot wait for him to talk to Ted again and just fucking bury his ass. Now this is the smoking gun. Undeniable proof of fraudulent fake trading straight from behind the scenes of Trader's Domain's own software provider. But I'm not finished because 
it's not enough to talk about if there was fraud. Yeah, that's just that's just one little bit. You gotta bury him. Where did the money go? Who was entitled to that? Yeah. Money? Well, I think I discovered that too because well, I obviously it was Ted. Emails from Trader's Domain leaked. To obviously, me. the money was going to Ted. Like, let's be real. Ted and probably yeah, a, another couple of people. Trying to figure out how we could use these to reconstruct a map of how this Ponzi scheme worked. <clears throat> when suddenly I realized the answer was right in front of me. Oh my hip hop! Holy. That comes holy. from the daily account statements. Now, I think we've talked about this briefly, but the way Trader's Domain convinced people that this was all real is they sent a set of daily trades, fake trades, to their customers. Supposedly, how much money they had made that day. It all looked very real, official. But in these statements, they had people's names in them, account numbers, and their balances. And I realized, well, I had several snapshots of these, and using this could reconstruct this whole thing so here's what i did i picked the day near the height of the ponzi scheme oh September my god right before withdrawals all stopped and i used a python script to pull all the emails i ended up with 9663 emails then i used that script to nine the account balance the name the account numbers and i used that to create a spreadsheet to map this whole thing out and using that we find out. See, this is why this is why Coffeezilla is fucking undefeated, bro. Holy shit! And I use that to create a Dude. spreadsheet to map this whole Absolute thing out. Absolute G. Using that, we find out a couple important things. Firstly, Absolute fucking check. How much was owed in this whole thing? And the answer is 3.3 billion dollars. Of course, not all that money is real. Uh, we have uncovered about 500 million dollars of real money that went in but jesus that Christ. brings us to the second thing we can discover which is who this money was owed to and this is where all the pieces of our ponzi fall in place okay here are the biggest promoters sponsors and owners in traders domain firstly at the top of the list we have tin pin aka tin tran with nearly a billion dollars oh now that might my. surprise some of you but keep in mind, he was the main account people would send money to, as we discovered in part one. The second largest holder is not surprising, Ted Sofranco. Obviously. Guy says, he doesn't own any of this anymore. Well, on September 20th, 2022, he had $370 million. Next up, we have somebody from Houston, an MLM promoter, Holton Bugs. He had $125 million. This guy, we've and seen him remember, a couple times. The first victims we spoke to, they talked to Holton and were shown huge account numbers. Now we know how that was possible. Now the fourth largest holder is Algo Capital, another sponsor we've known about for some time. We didn't know the size though, $96 million. Mike Sims, another big promoter. Dude, there's so many motherfuckers. Close behind with 84 million. And here we can find some interesting connections actually because it allows us to discover Ponzi schemes within Ponzi schemes. Watch this. So apparently Mike Sims and Algo Capital work together, at least according to them. I have a role of serving as director of international business for Algo Capital, uh, which is the uh, firm in Miami, Florida. Uh, we're also going to be expanding internationally here pretty soon as well. And we are a hedge fund. We're a hedge fund uh, and we specialize in Forex trading. Now, this is actually interesting when you realize that Algo Capital was partnered with something called Omega Pro, which is an MLM Ponzi scheme, which purported to trade Forex, which might sound familiar. And, and we're excited to be partnered with Omega Pro uh, on, on their vision. So it appears this so is that was another came from. Was that so that was another Ponzi scheme within it, dude. They're all just shady motherfuckers. This other Ponzi scheme. Basically, Algo Capital and Mike Sims took money from that Ponzi scheme supposedly to trade they funneled it into their own thing which was built around this thing a forex bot but of course that bot wasn't real yeah, in reality course, yeah. it was just seems a like guy. they forwarded that money into another ponzi scheme which is traders domain that's why i said ponzi schemes within ponzi schemes within ponzi schemes yeah. jesus christ uh, it looks pretty bad so they I'm not even going to try to break this down, honestly. It's going to hurt my brain trying to break it down. I can barely understand him breaking it down. And actually, funny enough, do you know who one of the promoters of this Omega Pro was? Come on! Let's go! Come on! Jordan Belfort. Uh, come on! Uh, 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 so in his Mr. Belfort is not, nor has ever been, a pay spokesman of Omega Pro. He actually declined their offer. Omega Pro is at two other events about sales. Uh, 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 that's right 
The scammer of Wall Street is back, Jordan Belfort. And I know some of you are thinking, wow, I thought he changed. <laughs> well, not so sure. There's only one way to get rich in this world, and that is quickly. You gotta get rich quick. I'm not talking about a get rich quick scheme. That's not what I mean. I'm, so I'm not advising you to go out and find some get rich quick scheme, which this is not. It's a legitimate business, okay? Oh, yeah. And as we've learned, the number one thing about a Ponzi scheme is saying, this is not a Ponzi scheme. This is not a get rich quick scam. This is not a scam. Why would this be a scam? Of course it's not a scam. That's like the number one cue. Is w normally when it's not a scam, they just don't even say that ever because it's not even really in their fucking mind because they're doing it legally. You know what I'm saying? Hey, actually, no, it isn't. None of that's true. You Wait, don't what? have to get rich quick. Yeah. Mega Pro was a get rich quick scheme. It and definitely it wasn't was a legitimate business. True. Unfortunately for investors, Omega Pro has since collapsed at the same time Trader's Domain did. And so investors, ironically, wow. got poor quick listening to a guy who got paid to speak. Good job, Jordan. I hope that 300 grand you had locked within Future Gin LLC was worth it. And I hope you pulled it from Trader's Domain in time. But let's leave that sleeve ball and Jesus. go back to another sleeve ball. Up next on our list of Traders Domain holders is Disruptive Tech with 59 million. Now, who is that? To be fair, Jordan Belfort as a person, right? And all these things, probably horrible. You cannot deny that The Wolf of Wall Street is one of the greatest movies of all time. That shit is fucking amazing. It is so, it's such a classic, such a classic. Well, <laughs> the email associated is Gilbert Pardala, who calls himself an enthusiast of the blockchain. In fact, he's so enthusiastic, he's previously been detained for a different scam called Dagcoin. I mean, Dude. allegedly, guys. Allegedly. Allegedly, next, yeah, Stormy of course. Wellington, another top 10. She's an influencer with $26 million in Trader's Domain. Which Damn. may explain why nine months ago she posted a video called, I bought a million dollar yacht cash. I mean, how do you think she did it, guys? It bought a million dollar yacht. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely not from her YouTube money. Which may explain why nine months ago she posted a video called, I bought a million... She has 14k views on this video. It's definitely not from her YouTube money. That's for sure. ...million dollar yacht cash. I mean, how do you think she did it, guys? It, it's a real mystery. Was it maybe that you were in a Ponzi scheme? I went out here and got it so all off of hard work and dedication. No lottery ticket. No mm. luck. Ah, darn uh. it. Turns out it was hard work and dedication all along. Yeah. Now, jokes aside, we could go one by one. Sounding like uh, John Cena or something. Holy shit. Through all these people, but we'll be here all day. However, a lot of these people didn't just end up with millions of dollars out of nowhere. They have that because they took it from the victims that they took a cut from, that they brought into this whole scam. So just in case I haven't mentioned the person who you got scammed by, here's I... a list of the- Not me. I didn't get scammed by nobody. And, uh, holy shit, this is a huge list. Holy fuck. Just in case I haven't mentioned the person who you got scammed by, here's a list of the top 500 players in Trader's Domain. If you have information- 500?! Oh my fucking god! This- uh, Holy shit, this is insane. This is 500 people who scammed. And this is just- I- uh, this is 500 people that he figured out. This is a top holder list, not an accusation of wrongdoing. Uh. Well, he's not saying it. I'm going to say it. If you're on this list, you probably scam people. So, I mean, holy shit. This is a lot of motherfuckers. This is insane. Here's a list of the top 500 players in Trader's Domain. If you have information on being scammed by them, you can contact me here to help with the investigation. Now, before we get to the final piece of this video, I wanted to just really briefly uh, come here and say, this is the most complicated investigation I've ever done. Yeah, and by I far. I couldn't have done it without the support of you guys out there. Um, Us, smile. We, we've literally run out of wall. 
think about that sentence. We're on the floor. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure that True. says good things about my state of mind. No, it's good. It's good. It's great. It's been so much fun. It's been one of the most gratifying things I've ever been able to do working on this case. And without the support of the patrons, Man. it wouldn't have been possible. So if you can support, just thank you so much. You'll get a lot of cool perks. If you can't, well, you've probably skipped this already. So I wanted to do you a solid and let you know when to check back in, uh, which is going to be right about now. I haven't skipped it. I don't skip nothing. Come on, bro. We're in it for the long haul, dude. The final question. We're 45 we... minutes in already. We're in it for the long haul. We have to answer is what's next for our village. And the answer depends on which one. Michael True. Sims, Mr. Hedge Fund, is having his assets frozen by the CFTC. Tin Tran, an associate of Ted Safranco, is allegedly on the run from his Texas home with his assets frozen. Holy Every shit. single sponsor I spoke to claims that they were just innocent victims. Sure, they may have pulled millions of dollars into this fund, but they didn't have any oh idea it was a God, scam. Oh my God, this is... Oh my God, they're like, oh, we're just in innocent victims. I mean... Maybe, but also it kind of seems like, uh, like you remember how in Harry Potter, when like the Dark Lord he used uh, the Imperious Curse on all these motherfuckers, right? It's the Imperious Curse, the one that like takes over your mind, and then when he died, everyone's like, "Oh no, he took over my mind! I had no idea what I was doing." That's kind of what it seems like. It seems like all these guys are over there making a fuck ton of money, are now like. Oh, no, it was the main guy. I had no idea what was going on. I was just in it. That's kind of what I get out of it, honestly. Like, that's 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 what it sounds like to me. Sure, they may have pulled millions of dollars into this fund, but they didn't have any idea it was a scam. And whether you find that credible, I'll let you decide. No, nope, I don't. Here are the kinds of explanations they gave. Wait, you have 10 million pounds worth of clients with Ted? Yeah, so I've got loads of clients. I've got loads and loads of clients. Oh my gosh, actual dry powder, like dry powder capital? Yeah, the other day I had my guy put $460,000 in, and it's, the, the thing is, he doesn't, know, but he doesn't look at any of the trades, we kind of tell him at the end of the day, but I was sold this as some like, a sort of, get your friends in, get your like family in, get everyone in, and it's solid, it's nothing's going to go wrong, so I brought all my That's clients, just... from all the investments that I've ever done, and brought them all over, and now it's gone to Personally, I don't find this all that convincing. Just like I don't find Ted Safranco's excuses convincing. Uh, and speaking of him, he wasn't that happy it's about like this the video Imperial thing from, out. from Harry and Potter. Predictably, he has taken to social it's like, media. It's like the Imperious Curse from Harry Potter. Literally, it's the Imperious Curse. It's the the Imperious Curse effect, rather. He had to vaguely threaten me. And I had no idea what was going on. All right, I'm not, I'm I'm not pausing anymore. No more, no more. Let's finish the video. Predictably, he has taken to social Home media stretch. to vaguely threaten me and my family. Mm. Mr. Steven Fried Friedman or Fries Friesman or whatever his name is, who goes by Coffeezilla. Mm. I don't think he's ever dealt with someone. Mm. I'm sorry. I had to instantly pause it. You sound like a fucking bozo when you freed free. You don't even know his fucking like. How, oh my god. I'm sorry, that just Whatever aggravated his name me. is, who goes by Coffeezilla. I don't think he's ever dealt with someone my size before. And nobody knows anything about his family because they said. don't have the resources I have. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I was very scared of Ted Safranco looking into me with his vast $370 million Ponzi money. But when he referred to me as Mr. Friesman, yeah. I breathed a sigh of relief. That's I what I'm I'll saying. I think I'll be okay. Now, where do we go from <laughs> here? Why did I make this whole big docu-series? Well, I basically wanted to argue for two points, essentially. Number one, this fraud is much larger than the $145 million Ponzi scheme the CFTC is currently investigating, in my opinion, okay? I think they only have a fraction of the people who were truly involved and a fraction of the dollar amount that was truly involved. I mean, we have crypto transactions proving a lot more. So that's number one. I think this is much Honestly, they all... I don't see why, like, the government doesn't reach out or the people investigating this doesn't reach out to him directly and say, we don't care about anything that you have to say. Give us all of the evidence that you have accumulated. We will make our own decision off of this and just take all the evidence. And then hopefully they come to the same conclusion as him. Right. And then it boom, boom, boom. All right. You're right. 
Baker, don't take his word for it. Take his evidence and come to your own conclusion. But the second problem, and it kind of ties in, is the crimes being charged and not charged, okay? Right now, Ted Safranco is only being charged with submitting falsified bank documents. Now, to put this in context, this would be like if Sam Bankman-Fried's only crime being charged was for ordering too much DoorDash. I don't know Sam I mean, Bankman-Fried. Did that happen? I Maybe know that so. is. It'll be litigated, but um, Ted did a lot more than that, right? Okay, so yeah. did his co-founder, David Negus, who isn't being charged at all. Jesus. So did Algo Capital, who told people this was a trading bot, an algorithmic thing. And they were handing money over to Trader's Domain. They haven't been charged. Neither has Holton Bugs, Mr. Exotic Cars and Yachts. This just isn't right, in my opinion, okay? I think these people took advantage of this Ponzi scheme, got very yeah, rich. Yeah, 100%. And, I mean, if you want to even forget for a moment the idea of justice being served or whatever, what I'm really afraid of is that they're just going to do it again. I'm just afraid we're going to make a repeat of— and get away with it too. I know he says he he said the justice thing and like justice not being served, which is them getting away with it. But like still, uh, holy shit! If they like, they're they're uh, the wow. same mistake That's the Ontario just... Securities Commission made twice. By the way, a few years ago they had this case. It slips through their fingers, and as a result, more people get hurt because it's not like Ted's gonna stop, right? Already, he's looking to relaunch Trader's Domain under new names. I mean, the guy couldn't even take a year off scamming people. His website already promises a migration of funds. So if people like Ted or his cronies get off easy, they'll likely do the yeah, same thing continue. all over Holy again. Holy shit, Only man. they'll probably get better at hiding the scam. True. So I'm hoping, for the sake of the victims, Ted and his goons... Don't get away with it. They'll get better at hiding the scam, but if they do it again, honestly, and start doing the same thing, I mean, CoffeeZilla just makes another video and just fucking hunts him down again. Does the same exact thing, exposes it, nether ginormous series for CoffeeZilla, and and hopefully those motherfuckers get caught. Find it. I mean, if they don't get caught after this one, fuck. I, have, I really don't have any confidence they'll get caught if they don't get caught after this one, man. Because at the end of the day, is this ridiculous. that's who matters here, right? The victims. I mean, yes, I'll be honest. There are probably some unsympathetic investors in this thing, right? People like Jordan Belfort. People like Mike Sims, who scammed so many people. So it's tempting to say, okay, well, how did anyone fall for this? It's such an obvious scam. Maybe you think some of the people aren't sympathetic. But like all Ponzi schemes, at the bottom of this thing, you just find regular people who are trying to make a better life for themselves. And some of them didn't even know they were in Trader's Domain. For example, leaked emails I discovered showed a pension fund was invested in this thing called the Bergie Pension Fund. I don't know what that means. It mean. got I don't, apparently funneled through— I'm mad dumb. I don't know what a pension fund is. I'm really dumb. I have no idea what that is. I kn I've heard of it. I don't know what that in is, this though. thing called the Bergie Pension Fund. It got apparently funneled through Oppenheimer and Bishop and Associates, appears to have been then put with Renaissance Consulting, which was then placed in Trader's domain. And I kept seeing that. Regular people investing their livelihood, mortgages, college savings. Some of them had no idea they were invested in Trader's domain. They just put their money with a guy they trusted who put that money with another guy and another guy and another guy. And then it and just wound you know it, up. As a, wow. So those people didn't deserve this. And this video series is for those people, the regular people who lost money in this. They deserve justice because YouTube investigations, look, it's great. I love it. Bro, if it's a fucking scam, it's a scam. Like, let's be 100% honest here. If it's a scam and it's proven that it's a scam, then let's not be like, oh, let's not be like, oh, it's a scam. And then walk away and do fucking nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Let's have a little bit of a uh, little bit of a deterrent for fucking doing a scam and stealing a bunch of people's money. Like it's it's robbery without a without a weapon. It's it's like robbery, but you're not in front of them. You're just you're just robbing them through literally through the Ponzi scheme. Like, what the fuck are we talking about here? It's not how how right? do they get away with this? That's so insane with me. It's great. It's cool. Comments. It's not enough. Traders Domain has hurt a lot of people, and the people in charge need to be held fully accountable. Yes, and I cannot do that. So for now, our story ends here.
I really hope the investigators fucking get in touch with him. Or at least do something about it. Like, come on. <clears throat> Damn, man. Hey, coffee. Final Rude four minutes. Usual. We're in the Is final act. Call so you can have a bunny to play the depressed Closing chapter. With? No, I came here for some peace and quiet. And, you know, I guess I wanted to apologize about the whole stochastic parrot thing. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't mean it. Eh, I couldn't stay mad at you. The bar would be out of business. Yeah, to be honest, I'm surprised you guys lasted so long. What has it been, like, a few weeks? Speaking of that, what happened with that Ponzi scheme you were investigating? Oh, yeah, that's over. I mean, Ted's still free. Sponsors deny everything. Man. I guess you could say I'm still missing my perfect ending. Oh, well, I guess I'm sorry. I really thought you just needed more evidence. Nah, you were right to push me. I mean, it helped, and you were right about a lot of things. Well, I'm always right. I mean... Uh, what was that other thing I was right about? You know, I think you said something about, uh, enjoying the next best thing with a friend. Oh, right. That. Well, I can't drink, though. Yeah, I thought about that. What am so I, I watching right now? I picked up something on my way here. You like a little bit of juice, right? Coffee. You did. I did. I did. Premium grade stuff right here. Premium grade stuff, huh? A nine volt? What, you couldn't get a bigger battery with all that Patreon money? I mean, what am I gonna do? I gotta keep you sharp. Who do you think's gonna drive me home? Cheers, by the way, my friend. What the friend. fuck am I watching? That's a new one. I like a little better than Stochastic Parrot. Yeah, well, don't be too flattered. I think it's more of an indictment of my social life than anything else. Well, I, for one, am honored to be your first indictment on this case. Does this mean I'm like a sidekick now, too? Dude, what am I watching? No. I don't have sidekicks. Coffeezilla doesn't have sidekicks. You could have I a sidekick. I you're wrong. Yeah. I'm already your best friend. You could have an apprentice. I make you drinks. And I drive you around. I feel like a promotion is in order. True. I said you were I agree. a friend. And I work alone. He's like your Robin yeah, to your Batman a almost. best friend. Who also moonlights as a sidekick. You're impossible. I think I'll go by... Dr. Maxwell. And with that, we'll see you guys next week. Oh, uh, no, no, next don't week. do that. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just thanking the wonderful audience for watching. Next week. No, you do. You're doing that thing where you play us out while trying to pretend that this whole sidekick thing is happening. It's not happening. I we'll think it already real happened. Soon. Sidekick thing is happening, and I love every one of you. And the dynamic duo is back indefinitely next week every week surely i can't even do every week this took surely me like you four will. months a boy and his robot you won't want to miss it Click surely to see more videos as we zoom out and fade into black true nothing left to say 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 say, say. wow oh oh my god i need to stretch and we're about Almost an hour in. Holy shit. I know it was going to take a while to fucking watch this one. But oh my god. It was so worth. Holy shit. Wow. Well. Uh, overall thoughts. Hopefully all those motherfuckers. Um, you know. Get a little bit of jail time. So there's. Somewhat of a deterrent. For them not to do it again in the future. You know. Jesus Christ. Um, yo. Hey. Go subscribe to, uh, to Coffeezilla. If you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already man. God damn, what an absolute fucking banger. Surely he'll drop another video next week, right? Surely. <laughs> hey, yo, if you like the video, like the video. Uh, subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you next time, man. Deuces.